Um, one of those things, it's way easier to do out of the car is to, to upgrade knock sensors. So this is a factory knock sensor. There are two factory knock sensor locations on, on all Toyota inline sixes I've ever seen. Actually, the early 7Ms only had one, but all the Jay-Z motors had two. Um, it's a one wire knock sensor. These are called a resonant style knock sensor, meaning um, they kind of ring at one frequency. So not terribly useful. Um, the, the good news for the designers back in the day is that the ECU didn't have to do a lot of processing, right? You kind of look for voltage on the sensor. If, it's, if there's voltage, it's ringing. If not, then don't worry about it. Um, we're gonna use modern Bosch donut style sensors. We call them flat response sensors, meaning they respond to all frequencies on the spectrum, or at least any relevant frequencies to an engine. Um, so we can actually filter ourselves what parameters we're looking for, what frequencies. So this is, this is now a 3.4 liter motor. This is not the original block, not the original pistons, rods, crankshaft. Um, when you change displacement, uh, you're gonna change the resonant frequency. Uh, it's more tied to the bore size, which changed, because um, we're a little bit bigger than the one. So this is our WHP flat response knock sensor kit. So you get three terminals and three seals. The reason for that, it's only a two terminal connector. We just give you one in case you screw up or you lose it or drop it, right? So we give you an extra, just throw it in the toolbox to have a spare. Um, the sensor, this is a, a mounting stud we, we machine uh, or have machined to our specs. It's made out of titanium, not because it has any benefits. It's just really cool and it's not going to corrode. Um, so I'm going to open this up and show you how to install it. Um, the instructions are right here. There's a QR code. Torque specs are on the back in case you lose them. Um, you can also hit the QR code and it'll pull up the torque specs. It is 11 foot pounds for these. The reason that's so critical is because it's basically a microphone, it's attached to your engine. I'm actually, speaking of critical, I'm actually gonna take all the paint off this mounting surface because I don't want anything between that knock sensor and the engine. So I'm actually gonna take a couple angles here and just kind of scrape off all that paint. So you got good metal on metal contact. It's also why I sealed up the motor. I know there's gonna be a little debris from that. So we got a good flat, clean mounting surface. The stud you can just thread in by hand. You're gonna thread it until it bottoms out. The stud does not need to be tight because once we tighten this nut down, there's gonna to be torque on that stud. It's not gonna go anywhere. Slap our sensor on. That's the nut. I believe that's a 13. I know that my engine bracket's gonna be here. The starter's gonna be here. I'm gonna angle this just a little bit this way. So I've got to get access to the connector or as good as possible once it's in the car. The orientation of the sensor does not matter. What does matter is the torque of the fastener and the fact that the mating surface is nice and clean. Um, make sure you put the connector in a position where you can actually get to it. It's accessible to you. But the torque is super, super important. So I've removed that. I'm gonna go over my torque wrench here. Yep. Set my torque wrench to 11 foot pounds here. Let's see if I can sneak up on it. There we go, it's torqued, we're good to go. I'll repeat the same process for the front one, clean off the pad, throw in the stud, torque it down, make sure it's oriented in a manner that we can get to it, and that's the end of it, and then uh, we're onto the wiring, which we'll cover in another video.